Way back in 1980, when I studied first year geology at Flinders University in South Australia, where I am now, my sedimentology lecturer was Professor Chris Vonderbork. He was from California and he gave a lecture about an amazing place called the La Brea Tar Pits, where a whole host of Ice Age beasts had been trapped and preserved in natural oil seeps. That place has been on my geological bucket list ever since that lecture. And some 40 years later, I finally got to go and see it for myself. With the temperature and CO2 data that's recently become available from ice cores, it's become apparent that the tar pits also contain a very detailed record of a climate change event at a critical time in human history. I've made an extended version of this video with detail of all that on my new climate channel and I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. If you just want the short fossil version, stick with this one. Just a few kilometres from the city centre of Los Angeles, California is one of the most important fossil sites ever discovered, the La Brea Tar Pits. And those pits trapped an amazing array of animals from the end of the last ice age giant Colombian mammoths, an American lion, two species of oversized bison, giant ground sloths like this one, an immensely powerful animal, but still no match for the tar. And because those fossils ended up in the tar, they were exceptionally well preserved. The area sits above naturally occurring oil deposits. And in the early 1900s, the area was a producing oil field. But long before humans drilled for oil, some of it leaked to the surface through natural faults in the overlying rock. The oil pooled in low areas on the surface and the lighter fractions of the oil evaporated, leaving a sticky black tar behind. Rainwater and falling leaves covered the tar, setting a merciless trap. Animals walking over the pools quickly became stuck. Once in the grip of the tar, there was no escape. The more they struggled, the deeper they sank. Strength was no defense. Even mighty mastodons were eventually exhausted. Unable to move, they became easy targets for predators like saber-toothed cats. But the easy meal for many predators would be their last, as they too were trapped in the tar. The stench of their rotting bodies laid yet another trap for scavengers like dire wolves and eagles. Fighting over the rotting carcasses, they also met a sticky end in the tar. The nine to one ratio of predator to herbivore fossils in the pits shows just how effective the baited traps were. The number of carnivores that fell into those pits to get the rotting carcasses of the herbivores is truly impressive. Every one of these is the skull of a dire wolf that met a very dire end. As their flesh decomposed, their bones sank into the tar, preserving them and protecting them from the ravages of oxygen, sunlight and bacteria. Some of the pits would eventually be covered by layers of sediment deposited by floods, but a few remained open to the present day. When Europeans began settling in the area, they found uses for the tar in waterproofing roofs and making asphalt roads. When asphalt mining ceased, the pits filled with water but oil and methane are still bubbling to the surface in some of those pools today. Some of the pits have been reopened for research purposes and new buried tar pits have been discovered by recent construction work. So the site is still yielding a wealth of fossil remains. The bones in the tar were originally thought to be from cattle and other farm animals. But in 1901, Union oil geologist William Orcutt recognized them as fossils. The site is critically important because it records the extinction of the American megafauna in great detail. Recent radiocarbon dating has shown that most of the megafauna fossils are around 12 to 14,000 years old. Fortunately, the period covered by the tar pits is also within the time window where radiocarbon dating works really well. So it's possible to get very accurate dates for the fossils. Humans crossed the Bering Strait from Asia during the low sea levels at the glacial maximum of the current ice age. They arrived in the La Brea area about 13,000 years ago when the tar pits were most active. Just 300 years after those humans arrived, almost all of the American megafauna species were gone. 
In most other locations, large land animals are very rarely preserved as fossils because their bodies get eaten by scavengers and destroyed by the effects of weather. As a result, it's often very difficult to identify the exact time that a species died out. But the La Brea tar pits were so effective at trapping animals and so good at preserving their remains that there's literally a calendar of extinctions. Academic debate has raged for decades over whether the megafauna were hunted to extinction by the newly arrived humans or were simply unable to adapt to the rapidly changing environment. Recent research published by staff at the Page Museum has suggested that fires started by humans and accelerated by hotter, drier climate conditions were the nail in the coffin for the megafauna.